Hi guys, welcome back to the camera app. So in this video, we will going to implement the take photo functionality. So this will be called when the take photo button is pressed. And then we will also do the start camera function. So this will be called when you open the application. So to start the camera. So then first we will go into take photo method. So first we get a reference to the image capture use case. So if the use case is null, I mean image ca uh, capture is null, you will exit out of the function. So this will be null if you tap the photo button before image capture is set up. Without the written statement, the app would crash if it was null. And then next we'll create a file to hold the image so and then we will add an timestamp so the file name will be uh, unique so we'll create a variable photo file so to hold the image a uh, file we have used a simple date format and then file name format which we have given in the companion objects we have declared the format of the file okay And then uh, we will create an output file options object. So this object is where you can specify things about how you want your output to be. You want the output saved in the file we just created. So add your photo file we have created before. So while output options will be equal to the image capture. And then, and then we'll call take picture function on the image capture object. So we'll set up an image capture listener, which is triggered after photo has been clicked. So pass in output options, the executor and a callback for when the image is saved. You will find out the, find out the callback next. So we'll add image capture that take picture. So inside that output options.
and so in the case that the image capture fails or saving the image capture fails we'll add an error case to log that if failed so we'll use on error function we'll add a log to print the exception message if the photo capture failed And then if the capture doesn't fail the photo was taken successfully and then we will save the photo to the file you created earlier so we'll present a toast to let the user know if it was successful and we'll print a lock statement too and then we'll add a variable saved uri to save the photo file and then we will add a message photo captured succeeded and then we'll add a toast so to save the photo to the file we have created earlier so we'll present a toast to let the user know if it was successful and then okay and then we'll also print a lock statement too And then in a camera application, the viewfinder is used to let the user preview the photo they will be taking. You can implement a viewfinder using the camera X preview class. So to use preview, you will first need to define a configuration, which then gets used to create an instance of the use case. So the resulting instance is what you built to the camera X lifecycle. And then uh, we'll go with the start camera function. So we'll first create an instance of the process camera provider. So this is used to bind the lifecycle of cameras to the lifecycle owner. This eliminates the task of opening and closing the camera since camera X is lifecycle aware. And then we will uh, add a listener to the camera provider future. So we will add a runnable as one argument. We will fill it later, okay? So we'll add a context compact dot get main executor as the second argument. This returns an executor that runs on the main thread. So in the runnable, we'll add a process camera provider. So this is used to bind the lifecycle of our camera to the lifecycle owner within the application processes. So camera provider feature dot get okay and then we'll initialize our, our preview object so we'll get a surface provider from viewfinder and then we'll set it on the preview
and then we will add image capture dot builder method so to build and then we will select back camera as our default camera And then we need to bind the use cases to camera. So first we'll put this inside the try method. We'll unbind our use cases before rebinding it. So we'll uh, give camera provided and then we'll call unbind all method. And then uh, finally, we will update the call to bind to lifecycle. So in the try block, so to include the new method. So and then we'll add the exception. I will also add if use case binding failed. Add a log okay we'll add lock dot and then Finally, uh, we'll add a context compact dot get main executor as the second argument. So this returns an executor that runs on the main thread. And then finally, so we got the error here. So and then this is because we have given the preview uh, ID wrongly. So we'll copy this. Okay, paste it and then yeah, perfectly fine. Okay. Now, so when we run the app and we'll press the take photo and then we can see a toast presented on the screen and a message in the log cap. Okay. We'll remove the unused port statements. Okay, so when we run this and then let's see the output. Okay, and the successfully launched and then you can see our camera is here. You can see here is my laptop and okay and then when I click on take photo option you will see a toast presented on the screen so you can see the toast and you can also check your log to check the message so if you want to know where your photo has been uh, stored go to the file and then inside the Android you can see your app name so inside that your photos has been stored with the name file format we have been given in our program so you can see perfectly all our mobile uh, I mean pictures have been taken so so I have taken some other pictures too inside this and then the app is perfectly working fine okay and then you can also share these images okay so you can share these images wherever you want so in all the app 
and then our camera app is perfectly working fine so this is what i wanted to show you in this video and then that's all for today so we'll see you in the next video until then bye bye